Hey, what's up everyone? Tim Stoddard here. And in this week's video, I am going to show you ChatGPT's newest update called Canvas. It's blowing my freaking mind. I'm so excited to show it to you. Let's jump right into it. So Canvas is basically a code editor. I'm still learning a lot as to how this is going to be different from Windsurfer, from Codium. It doesn't appear to me quite yet like it's a code editor that's going to help you make static HTML websites, although I'm sure you could. It just doesn't have the functionality to make it so that you can easily drag the code into an FTP file to like upload your website. Nonetheless, um, let's dive right in to see exactly how this works. So first thing I'm going to do is ask for some information that has a lot of data. Um, this is random. The first thing that comes to mind to me is about addiction treatment. So please provide me with information about the rise the easily made into graphs. All right. Uh, so this is pretty standard. A lot of people that are familiar with ChatGPT so far understands what we're doing here. I'm using ChatGPT 4.0. This isn't the pro version. Um, I didn't want to go into the pro version because I want to keep a style that everybody's used to. So we can see the information. We can see that it pulls the sources. Everybody's pretty used to this. Uh, this is the new functionality and this is where it gets wild. So these tools right here, this is your an easy icon to look at all the tools. There's going to be more and more tools in time. I'm going to click on canvas. So we're going to enable the canvas functionality. I'm going to say, please turn this in formation into many visual graphs. So the canvas is going to open and we're going to be looking at the code. So as you can see, this isn't quite the same as Windsurfer. It's not like an HTML editor. It's not a text editor. Um, this looks like it's running all on Python. And, and then once the code is complete, we can click run. Um, this is going to run it. Yeah, it is on Python. Look how fast that is. That's fucking insane. And so now all of a sudden I have a multitude of visual graphs. So what can I do with these graphs? I can, well, I can copy this code or I can drag and drop. Let's see what I can do with this information. Okay, copy image. I'm gonna pull up my Substack just to see if this is gonna work. So I've, I've opened up a new text browser, a new text editor in the back end of Substack. So let's see if I can just copy this, copy image. Boom, absolutely insane. So yeah, this is absolutely incredible to me. I'm excited to see what this text editor is going to turn into. Obviously, these images are very easy to work with since you can just copy it and paste it into a backend Substack or WordPress or something like that. Um, that is one of the things about Claude that I don't like is when it creates the images, like it only creates the code. So you have to embed the code into the HTML version of your text editor. I think ChatGPT is a lot better at creating these these types of images, but it's insane. This is just absolutely insane how easily I can create multimedia now and run it on this canvas. And so it opens up like a whole new browser type, I guess you can call it, so that I can go back and forth. And then if I want to, if, if I wanna go back to regular ChatGPT, I can just close this. And here, here's my canvas. And if I wanted to, I can just open the canvas up again. It's amazing. It's very intuitive. It's great UX. I already understand it, even though I've only been using it for five to 10 minutes. It's incredible. Thank you so much for watching this video. Leave a comment. If you have any more questions, please hit that subscribe button, smash that subscribe button. I'll talk to you next time. Peace.